Um, and so uh, I'm going to be talking about wisdom uh, today as um, a form of uh, the accumulation of knowledge through real, real world experiences, often interpersonal experiences. Um, and for humans, many of these experiences are also uh, social. So as we go through life, we experience all kinds of interactions, all kinds of uh, social and non-social experiences. And so we accumulate this body of knowledge or wisdom that allows us to uh, make better informed decisions when, in the future, that sort of dictate our future behaviors. And these are the beautiful beasts that I'm going to be talking about today. This is the organism that most of my research has focused on. It's uh, the Argentine ant, uh, common in um, many parts of the world, but especially uh, in California where I'm from. And one of the really neat features of Argentine biology, and really the key to their success, um, is that they're unicolonial, meaning they form these massive super colonies across incredibly large spatial scales, hundreds or sometimes thousands of kilometers. And this is really bizarre for ants, because ants are renowned for being highly aggressive and very territorial, defending the space around their territory really aggressively against other colonies, especially of the same species. But here, in Argentine ants, you have a case where you can take ants from San Diego, drive all the way up to San Francisco, mix them together pretty much randomly, and they'll feed each other and groom each other and act like nestmates like they've known each other their whole lives. A really unusual social structure for ants. Okay, and so the key to this, this social organization uh, really um, originates from the individual experiences of workers in the colony. And these experiences are key at two particular stages of a worker's life. The first stage is uh, what we call imprinting, early in life, when a young worker emerges from pupation as an adult ant and starts to walk around uh, and do things in the colony. The second period is later in adulthood, as adult ants are going out into the world and foraging um, and interacting potentially with ants from foreign colonies. Um, this occurs, of course, most commonly in the native range because the introduced range is this massive super colony, but we see this also occurring at colony boundaries between the large super colony and our secondary colonies. And so, um, our initial evidence that something interesting was going on here was sort of correlative. So at some of our field sites, we have two super colonies coming together and meeting, and there's this sort of zone of interaction where they compete for food and territory, and they fight with one another. And we noticed if we take ants from these different sites, bordering, immediately bordering um, the colony boundaries, or ants that are more naive from far interior sites, we see different behaviors um, displayed towards each other. Ants from near the colony boundary display high levels of aggression towards each other, where ants that are more naive display very uh, low, but still significant levels of aggression towards each other. Okay, so we have imprinting early in life in young ants, we have sensitization as adults. And one really neat thing about this is you have the sort of same cues feeding into these developmental processes, but because of the different timing in life and the different contexts, you have diametrically opposite behavioral results. Early on, the cues that are encountered within the colony are um, absorbed into this template and are um, reacted to in a friendly fashion in future encounters. Potentially the same cues under a different context um, in ad adulthood um, are sens become sensitized to them and um, trigger high levels of aggression in future encounters. So in one context, you have acceptance of these cues or these individuals bearing these cues. In the second context, you have uh, high levels of aggression and rejection of them. So to bring this back around to the beginning, how will this uh, help uh, inform us about wisdom? Um, one thing is that this will tell us a little bit about how social experiences can inform subsequent decision making. And this is a property not only of ants and um, people, but of you know, nearly all organisms uh, in the world. Second, this tells us something about how social diversity and exposure to so social diversity during critical periods of development can affect responses to that diversity later in life. Third, it'll tell us a little bit about, in adult ants, about how important the context of an encounter is, whether it's agonistic or whether it's sort of in this nurturing environment early in life, um, how that is important relative to the content, just the presence of some sort of uh, foreign smelling cue. And finally, if we, when we do see this sensitization, this will tell us something about how sort of generalizable this phenomenon is across a variety of different encounters. Are these ants making very specific targeted decisions, or are they sort of expanding to the whole world a response to some sort of agonistic encounter? 